The house was rebuilt in uh, 1916 to 17. Um, the old Victorian farmhouse, which uh, had been used by Elsie and her family for years as a summer retreat. The, there is a rumor that it may have burnt down. No one is quite sure about that. Um, but certainly Elsie and Hadley wanted a house of their own and th th their own taste, so the house was destroyed and um, another house built in very interesting style. Uh, the, it's called Spanish Colonial. And um, we believe that Elsie and Hadley would have seen designs similar to this on their travels in California and Florida. There's a, a golf clubhouse in Daytona, Florida, which to my mind is very evocative of this house with the three arches at the front and the clay tile roof. Uh, and that's possibly where they had the notion to, to build something in this style. When Elsie died, her, her will, which was very complicated and had undergone some changes, um, stipulated that she wished to have the house used as a museum and the grounds used as a public park. And uh, she left a large amount of money, but there was so much money that the city felt that they needed access to this because it was uh, the depression. They went to the province and they got an act of parliament passed to break Elsie's will. Uh, so some money was left for the maintenance of the house, um, but not a huge amount. The, the remainder of the will was used, or the money was used to build the Elsie Perry and Williams Memorial Library, and they added a wing to the South Street Victoria Hospital. A group of people came forward with an idea to have the estate run as an event centre or reception centre, and that would be a way of, of making sure it was preserved and used and um, the city accepted a proposal, and that's when Heritage London Foundation was formed in 1981. If you can find a viable use for a building, you're more likely to see it preserved. And when this building became this event centre, it, it basically saved its life. But that's why it's not a museum. It's um, not quite what Elsie wanted. The public gets to come here and visit, and they have access to it, and people walk their dogs in the grounds every day. Um, so it's well used and well loved. One thing I'd love to say is that if you, if you rent the estate for a wedding, you do have it to yourself. It's like having your own home, but with all these gorgeous grounds around and, and space and light and air and, and privacy. So that, that makes it really special for people, I think, when they rent the estate. I think when people come to visit the estate, one of the most impressive um, aspects of the house is the Great Hall. People love that room because it's so spacious and light. It's surrounded with windows. It has a beautiful Tudor Gothic window in, in the center of it, which overlooks the grounds. A big stone fireplace uh, with an intriguing bell pull, which is uh, up in the, uh, in the paneling. Um, which is connected to an old train bell, which is located in the roof. The other thing people are fascinated by is Elsie's own bedroom and bathroom. There's a hidden safe in the bathroom, in the wall, covered by a towel rail, somewhere you'd never look to see that there would be a safe. Personally, I've never seen a ghost here. People ask that question quite often. Is there a ghost? Are there ghosts? And I've worked here late at night on my own. Um, I've never had a sense of anything, but I'm, I'm not very sensitive, perhaps. But we had an estate manager who was convinced that Elsie came to visit. There is a chaise longue in her bedroom with a great fat cushion on it. And Jan would plump up that cushion at night before she left. And in the morning, there would be a large dent in it. When Hadley died in 1932, Elsie really was heartbroken, and she arranged for a piece of land um, in, the, in the corner of the garden to be consecrated, and Hadley was buried there. And after she died, uh, she was also interred beside him. And on that memorial, there's a, there's a lovely stone memorial to the, to the pair of them. It is actually their grave. It's not just a memorial. Four of their dogs are also listed, and if you walk behind the grave, there are some um, plaques in the ground, and it's kind of fun. Kids particularly love to go and look to see how many dogs they can find. The balance between Heritage London Foundation running this house uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, we, we have to pay for the, you know, the 
floor polishing and the window cleaning and the eaves drop clearing and, and those sort of minor things. But the city is responsible for the external upkeep and major repairs. And they've done a really good job, particularly recently. A lot of uh, repairs have been done to the gutters and they've repainted it. And another thing that has happened is that because it's a, a public park, it is beautifully maintained as a garden. And the grounds are increasingly, year by year, being beautified by the city. The house would be perfectly viable as a family home today. It has wonderful heating and lighting and air conditioning and modern things. It could do with some storm windows. Um, it's, a, it's a perfectly functioning family house. It's just that it was never intended by Elsie for that use again, uh, because she wanted all Londoners to have access to it, not just one family. Um, and, and her generosity has ensured that, that um, it's much more widely used than just for a single family house. But wouldn't it be a cool family house to live in?